by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. This morning's New York Times contains an op-ed that President Trump is calling treasonous. I'm Laura Podesta, and I'll detail what it says and how the Times is protecting its source. And back here at home, Montana U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale has a big day ahead coming up what he says about campaigning shoulder to shoulder with President Trump, and that takes place in Billings later today. Good morning to you. Coming up on 630 here on your Thursday morning, I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Ella will have our Thursday forecast in just a few moments. The biggest mystery in Washington this morning is who the senior Trump aide behind the anonymous New York Times op-ed titled, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Now the Times is defending its decision to grant the author anonymity, saying their job would be in jeopardy if his or her identity were known. And last night, President Trump seemed to confirm that in a series of tweets. CBS News' Laura Podesta has the details. Editorial, can you believe it? Anonymous, meaning gutless, a gutless editorial. Shortly after reacting to the op-ed in the New York Times, President Trump tweeted a one-word question, treason, and called on the paper to turn over to the government the senior official who wrote the scathing piece. We have somebody in what I call the failing New York Times that's talking about he's part of the resistance within the Trump administration. This, person this is what we have to deal with. In the op-ed, the author claims the president's impulsiveness results in half-baked, ill-informed and occasionally reckless decisions and that unsung heroes have gone to great lengths to keep bad decisions contained to the West Wing. This is what all of us have understood to be the situation uh, from day one. Members of Congress say they're not surprised by what was written. Those of us who've been around him in moments when he's lost it understand that you don't want to be in the room and hear what he has to say. And, and God forbid, be in the room when he's about to make a terrible decision that will hurt this country. A New York Times spokesperson said the op-ed, quote, adds significant value to the public's understanding of what is going on in the Trump administration from someone who is in a position to know. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, the op-ed came a day after reports of a new book by Bob Woodward titled Fear expressed similar efforts by staff to tame the president's action. President Trump called the book a work of fiction multiple times yesterday. And Montana State Auditor and candidate for U.S. Senate Matt Rosendale is headed to Billings today for a campaign event with President Trump. This will be the second time President Donald Trump has visited the Treasure State to back Rosendale's campaign and push voters to support the Republican candidate. Rosendale is seeking to unseat incumbent Democrat John Tester. National attention is on races like this because it could change the congressional balances, which currently favor conservative voices. Republicans hope to keep that control, while Democrats are pushing hard to win it back. Rosendale says his focus is on what's best for Montana. The people of, of Montana expect someone to go to Washington, D.C. and to do the work that they tell us back here that they're going to do. And John Tester hasn't done that. And that's why President Trump is coming out here to set the record straight and to support my campaign. Now, MTN News has been drilling down on the contents of political ads in Montana's top electoral races this year. In our latest installment, MTN's chief political reporter, Mike Dennison, looks at an ad charging Republican U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale with money laundering and other things. This ad is paid for and produced by the campaign of Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. Here's how it opens. As Montana's insurance commissioner, Matt Rosendale's been busy running a money laundering scheme, dodging campaign finance laws and stuffing his own pocket. Well, not really. What Rosendale did is ask campaign donors to help pay off personal loans that he made to his unsuccessful 2014 campaign for the U.S. House. Several did so, and in the process, gave Rosendale's Senate campaign more than the $5,400 per person limit. That's allowed as long as the extra pays off the old debt. Rosendale used some of that money to pay off part of the debt, but then loaned the same amount back to his Senate campaign in May. Rosendale's campaign notes correctly that he hasn't violated any campaign finance law or rule and reported it all publicly. The campaign also denounced the tester ad, saying it falsely insinuates Rosendale did something wrong. The ad also makes these charges. Including raising over $16,000 from insurance executives on a junket to Florida. Then cut himself a check to his personal account when he got back to Montana. That junket was a conference of workers' compensation insurers. 
where Rosendale made a presentation in May of last year. He did raise the money from insurance executives and used it to pay off part of the personal loan he made to his 2014 campaign. Again, nothing illegal or against any rule, and it's all in public records. It's also worth noting that Tester's campaign has accepted plenty from insurance interests in the past 18 months, at least $193,000, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. Perhaps a more pertinent question is, when it comes to health care and health insurance, where do these two candidates stand, and how does that affect Montanans? That's a story we'll be doing later this month as part of our campaign coverage. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now you are able to see all of Mike Dennison's ad breakdowns from this year on our website. And a reminder, you can follow the president's visit to Billings throughout the day on KBZK and KXLF and get extended coverage on our websites and full reports tonight at 5.30 and 10. 6.34 now, Matt joins us. A uh, nice day for uh, the uh, president to visit the Treasure State. Uh, the weather uh, beautiful across the state. It there. really is. Temperatures uh, at or a little above average. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of chances of rain in western Montana. We'll hang on to that. We like that. Uh, Temperature-wise, we're doing all right. 40s and 50s for most of us. 32 this morning in West Yellowstone. A couple of clouds out there kind of propping those temperatures up a bit early on in the day. It's going to be a fabulous afternoon, though, with temperatures into the 80s. A couple of isolated chances of rain. Maybe a rumble of thunder possible as well, but it looks like a nice weekend ahead. We're going to talk about your weekend forecast coming up from the Billion Auto Weather Patio coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 635 now on this Thursday. Public comment being requested for the Limestone West proposed timber sale project at the edge of Bozeman. A draft environmental impact study has been released by the state. It includes three options, including taking no action and putting off the proposal for some 10 years. The other two options include logging with a nine mile road or less logging with a six mile road. The proposed project is next to the Triple Tree Ranch subdivision. Public comment being accepted now through the end of October. For more information, visit our website. And Butte commissioners are considering a contract with J Fortune Construction to keep the repair steps outside of the courthouse. And some of the steps leading up to the front entrance have been closed nearly all summer long. County Building Director Pat Holland says that the county expects the project to cost about $140,000. Holland adds that over the years there have been some repairs to keep those steps intact, but now the foundation needs to be rebuilt. We did remove one step for observation underneath it to see what was there. And we're still somewhat of a Pandora's box until we remove the steps. We don't really know exactly what's there and then the methods that they'll take to repair it. Holland says once the process is underway, the repairs should last no longer than 90 days. And during that time, visitors can use the west side door located off of Montana Street. Some good advice there. Yeah. 637 now almost. A well-known con artist turned security consultant came to Montana last week to share tips on how to protect yourself against scams. In this week's Fraud Watch, MTN's Jonathan Imbarian looks at some of Frank's Abagnale's advice. As a teenager, Frank Abagnale became a notorious con artist and forger pursued by the FBI. It's a story famously presented in the 2002 film Catch Me If You Can. Some nuts flying around the country posing as a pilot, call him the James Bond of the sky. He's a kid, that's why he doesn't have a record. But for more than 40 years, Abagnale has been on the other side, advising the government, private businesses, and the public on how to prevent fraud. Last week, Abagnale visited Montana on behalf of AARP's Fraud Watch Network. He shared some of his advice on avoiding scams in a presentation at the Helena Civic Center. Before his talk, Abagnale spoke with MTN's Mike Dennison on Face the State. He says scams are based on social engineering, the use of deception to win your trust and get you to give up information. There is no technology, there never will be any technology to defeat social engineering. You only defeat social engineering through education. Abagnale says every scam comes down to one of two red flags. At some point in that scam, I'm either going to ask you for information such as your name, social security, bank account number, date of birth, or I'm going to ask you for money. And when I ask you for money, it's immediate. You can't say, well, let me just mail that in. No, it has to be right now. You have to do it this moment. Technology, including social media, has made it easier for scammers to access some information. You never, ever want to tell someone where you were born and your date of birth because that's 98% of me stealing your identity. Abagnale says law enforcement doesn't have the resources to prosecute most scams, so there's no substitute for educating yourself. 
We have great technology and we have great educational tools available, but if you don't use them, then they're worthless. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Frank Abagnale has put more information about fraud and how to protect against it on, your, on our website. Now, you can also find those links on our websites. It is time for a quick break. Here's a sneak peek of what's to come on Montana This Morning. Well, this is it. The bacon rind fire has flared up in just the last two days here in Yellowstone National Park. I'm John Shearer, and coming up, we'll explain how fire crews plan to deal with this change in the fire. Ahead on CBS This Morning, President Trump claims treason from within his administration after a scathing op-ed by an anonymous senior official. Major Garrett has new insight into the growing anxiety inside the White House. And we'll talk to Starbucks's Howard Schultz in his final interview before he steps down as chairman and from the board. He says the newest store opening is personal for him. And we'll ask whether he plans to challenge President Trump in 2020. We'll see you right at 7.